All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode. They titled it Everything Music on YouTube, so I guess we're going to go with Everything Music for now until we come up with a fire name. Hey, if y'all watching want to give us a name, I I'll cash Yo. up you if, if you come up with some fire. You come up with some fire, I will Yo. cash up you. You know what? I'm doubling that. Best name, Actually, best name, get some bread. Dwa is going to cash up y'all, not us. Dwa yeah. is going to like cash that, up What you expect, the what you expect team will cash up you some bread and come up with a good name for us. Whoever yes. it is, comment on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, wherever. Best name, best caption, get some bread for what you expect. Shout out to the team. go. Big giveaway. But uh, as y'all know, it's the boy Armand, writer, editor, podcaster, blah, blah, blah. I do a lot of shit, but I love talking this music shit. And I'm here with one of my, one of my favorite people, talented rapper, studio owner, Black King, faithful Ooh. Black King, King Solomon. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yo, shit, I'm going to have you do my intros everywhere hey, I go. Man, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hey, we got, we got to keep it in the family, keep it in the family. But hi, 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 hi. How are you, man? How's your weekend? Oh, man, good, good. Busy week for me. Uh, but nonetheless, a lot of good music came out, so very happy to a lot of listening this week. But good, bro. How are you? How's your mental health? How's everything going for you? I feel great, man. I had, had a good week. Um, it's always good to start the week on a high note and just kind of carry it through rather than start low and have to build up from there. So I'm, I'm just maintaining. I'm just maintaining. But uh, yeah, as, as King said, there was a lot of drops this weekend. Um, I'm going to sound like a broken record from the last couple weeks, but I did not get to everything. But I got to a significant number of projects <laughs> and there was some good stuff that comes out that uh, came out. I actually yeah. want to start with uh, an EP from Russ called Chomp. Five song EP features from Benny the Butcher, Black Thought, King Crooked, Buster Rhymes, Absol Pro uh, production by DJ Premier. You know, Russ Back gets. Himself. Yes, yes. And, you know, his, Russ's story is very well known. He's, he, he's, he does it by himself. He doesn't really adhere to the typical industry standards. He'll drop like a song a week. He, he dropped an album earlier this year. He's got the EP now. You know, he does the R&B stuff. He does, he does the rap stuff. But he, he gets a lot of hate because of his personality, because of how, how you know, um, he, he's very open about him doing everything for himself. And it kind of comes off to uh -huh. people a bit standoffish because he's, he's, he's a bit braggadocious. But, hey, if you're doing everything yourself in music, which is very hard, as you know, it's like you, you definitely deserve some praise for that. And with this specific project, Chomp, this man deserves a lot of praise. He was rapping his ass off. How'd you feel about it? Yeah. And, and, and it's just a, before I even tell you my opinion on the project, it's weird to me the hate that he gets for the reason that he gets it, right? Maybe a big artist in hip hop that isn't a cocky asshole. Doesn't exist. <laughs> As a rapper. And then I say hip hop. Let me, let, me, let me change my thing. As a rapper. Name me any big time rapper that don't think they're the hottest shit on the planet. Yeah, I mean, that Maybe just, one. Th that comes with the territory. Rap is competitive, it's, it's braggadocious, it's... it's that, like, that's what we all grew up on. So to see, like, that's some of the reason that he gets hate towards him is is the most backward things ever. And that, and that honestly just shows that, you know, people don't like what they're, what they're not used to, right? Russ is very different this day and age, right? Mm -hmm. Super, super independent guy does the rapping shit, as you said, does the singing shit, does it all his way, how he wants to do it, um, doesn't cop chase, doesn't, not on Instagram all day, flaunting, like, the only time you see him is when you're playing you music or playing you beats, or that's about it. Like, outside of that, he's not on social media with the fuck shit, right? So, he's doing everything anti today's standard of hip-hop, and people hate it, it but it's, it's it's everything that we want at the same time so mm -hmm. I, I just think the rust tape is weird but I, I honestly i actually listened to the project today uh, when i finished the, at the gym loved it loved the project uh, i just want to touch on a couple of things specifically uh, let me just pull it up real quick so uh first off i, I think off, off the rip rust's production is actually pretty good and i and i and i say pretty good because a lot of the times artists that take the producer route, um, either they usually go full on, right? So, for example, someone like Young Berg, right? Some, most people have heard of Young Berg at one point. He went from an artist to straight producer out. That's one of the best producers in the game, but he don't really rap no more, right? Juicy J, you know, made a couple singles, but like Juicy ain't not a rapper no more. He's a producer. Uh, Chief Keith, another, everybody in the moment knows Chief Keith. He's doing, he's done a lot of major productions. You know what I'm saying? So it's weird, not weird, but it's different 
to see a guy who <clears throat> is currently rapping and dropping as much music as Russ is and doing the production at the rate that he's going. So yeah. off the rip, I want to really give him props, especially because the, the records that he did produce are heat. But that shit with Ab Soul was silly. Yeah. Like, that shit was silly. That shit with Benny and Black Thought, uh, I believe the record called Momentum, mm-hmm. fucking silly. And, what, what, and the one thing that I think Russ doesn't get credit for is how well he can rap. Like, that motherfucker can rap his ass off. Yeah. Like, he can definitely hold his own against whoever you want. And I think that, that, that says a lot about the guy, his, his drive, his mentality. Because, you know, you know, we can talk about Best on Earth and all these radio singles that do numbers. <clears throat> but then again, he's out for most rappers today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I, I love the project. Uh, this is actually, to be honest with you, and people say we're rushing. I'm really not like a quote-unquote rush fan. I've actually never listened to a full project. This is actually the first project that I listened to, so I usually just listen to the singles. But I was pleasantly surprised. So, yeah, big fan of the project. It's, it's easy listening, five records. But if you like rapping, if you like bars, really, really good project. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Like, it's like you said, he held his own against some heavy hitters in rap. Black Thought, Benny the Butcher, Buster Rhymes. Black like, Thought. Like, Black Thought and Buster Rhymes. And I'm sold. Yeah. They wanted to work with him. Like, yeah. we are talking some of the best lyricists ever in hip-hop. The fact that they wanted to work with Russ tells you all you need to know. And that's that, That's always the most interesting thing to me. I, I kind of look at it the way I look at, like, when bas- when um, commentators talk basketball versus when, like, athletes talk basketball. It's like commentators make up their narratives, fans make up their narratives, but but I listen to what the basketball players say, say about – sorry about that. Someone's calling me. Uh, I, I listen to what that's the – <laughs> <laughs> I, I listen to what the basketball players are saying about other basketball players. And I pay attention to when certain rappers want to work with other rappers. So Black Thought getting on a record with Russ. Benny, the, this, is, this is Benny's second record with Russ. I, I would suggest you mm-hmm. go back to his, his album this year, Shake the Snow Globe. Benny had a verse on that, too. And, like, Ross mm-hmm. was on it, too, bro. Like, the, 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 I did hear the Ross record. Like oh, the, was it the same record? Are they both on that record? No, no, no. It's different records. R- it's different. Okay, Ross, I did hear Ross, Ross one, record. and that shit was crazy. Yeah, yeah, no. Nah, it's just two different records. But, um, yeah, man, like, I, it, that's, that speaks volumes to me. Like, when, when certain artists want to work with other artists and, like, that artist is hated, but, like, within the industry, people embrace them, like, that's, that's something to pay attention to. So, yeah, Russ, and, Russ did his thing. And just our last point of that, I, I think – so I want to even make another little side note. Even the fact that not only that they wanted to work with him, but they went hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, they really put effort into their guest verses on, on this project. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, Black Thought's going hard. Like, Benny, it wasn't like, you could tell, you can tell, and I'm going to bring this up later on a different record, but you can tell when somebody is there to work with the person because they want to, rather, because, rather than getting paid to, yeah. right? So, like, you can tell, like, these guys wanted to work with Russ, and they put the same amount of effort that Russ did into, into those records. And I, I say, again, that's the volume as to where he is amongst his peers and how they view him. So, definitely big shout out to Russ. Definitely go check him out. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, I'm excited to bring up this next one yeah. because I want to I take the reins for this one. How did you feel about Pluto Baby Pluto? Um, so I've, I've made my feelings on Future's year pretty clear. I love his features. I didn't like his album High Off Life. I liked Eternal Take. I didn't love it. I liked the deluxe more. So seeing Future and Uzi get together just off the names, it's exciting. But I thought about it and I was like, I don't necessarily need this right now. Like we've heard Future and Uzi before. I'm pretty sure they put a a collab tape on SoundCloud back in like 2016. I I, I could be making that up. Um, but yeah, it, it, it didn't really excite me. And then I saw the track list and it was just them. And then they each only had one solo track each. So I'll admit, I kind of went into it with some apprehension. I listened, I think I saved half the project and I've, I've, I've ran it back a bit more since then. There, there are some really good tracks on there, but overall future just, I I, I don't want to call them washed, but there were some, there were certain songs where it's just like this is the guy who gave us some incredible music over the last couple years like where what what's going on like so and like he had like three verses that were really really hard that I loved but there were other ones where he was really lackluster and like Uzi saved the song but there were verses by Uzi that I didn't really love either it it, 
it, it didn't feel it didn't feel special like like the, you know we've had some special collab albums over the years obviously watch the throne what a time to be alive super slimy i'll put up there without warning 21 savage and offset i'll put up there even dave east and styles p's collab project from 2018 i will put up there and like yes i i know how people feel about davies but it felt like styles p brought some good stuff out of date uh but with future and uzi is like i i don't know man they just it felt mailed in like I, like I was talking about it on on Stay Busy. Like I don't think that they recorded this project together. I think they were sending stuff back and forth, like a bunch of ideas from from Future. Future would record and then send an idea to Uzi. Uzi would record, send it back to him. But it, it didn't feel like they were together making moments. Really, like focusing on creating a musical experience. Like the, of course, the the production is always going to be good. And it, it kind of leaned more toward an Uzi sounding project that, that, than a future sounding <clears throat> project production wise. Like it kind of yeah. felt like Future was fitting himself into Uzi's world, which is okay because we, we tend to see that on certain collab projects. Like What a Time yeah. to Be Alive, Future, um, Future was kind of the lead and Drake was kind of fitting his way into there. Um, but yeah, yeah. Th this just didn't, it didn't really, it didn't do it for me. And, and I know that's crazy to say because I saved half the album, but I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I don't know how much I'm going to go back to it after this week, next week. So, so it, it's interesting because how you felt that they weren't even in the same room together recording, I actually feel the exact opposite. I actually feel like not only were they together, but it was one of those things. That, and this, as a studio owner, an engineer working with artists nowadays, what I'm seeing is everybody wants to do the freestyle thing, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to go into the booth and start recording and whatever happens, happens. I think and that's what this project reminded me of, of two guys being in a room that just freestyled everything that came on and probably went three, four, maybe five nights together and whatever came of it came of it, right? Yeah. And there was a time where I felt that that type of recording, that type of style, worked right a lot of records that i know i know future someone who never writes i know i don't know if Uzi writes but you know those things won't work but i think what happens is over time it's hard to create something special as you said so like this project i will agree with you i didn't feel it was special i just felt like it's one of those projects that makes you want to be rich and do ignorant shit right so <clears throat> that's your lane and you'll love the project i felt like i said the production was great there's some standout records that I really, really like. Um, let's go through them very quickly here. Because uh, cause I, I have very similar feelings to you, although I liked it a little bit more, I would say, than you. But I, 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 would I go back to the whole project? No. But there are certain records like Drinking and Smoking I really like. That's a good one. Uh, Plastic I really like. That's like, a good one. Uh, uh, Bought a Bad Bitch I really like. I didn't like that. Uh, uh, Million Dollar Play I really like. And... Stripe, Stripe, the first record, Stripe Like Burberry, I really like. So those are just a couple of the ones that I did enjoy. Um, now, you're right. There are a lot of them that I, like, Bankroll, don't remember that record. Off that, don't remember that record. So there's a lot of, like, stuff that, that kind of just, you know, kind of comes and goes. But I kind of feel like, and this is what I said on a previous episode about Future, right, where it, this is kind of his whole career. He cares sometimes and doesn't care others. And you can tell in the music when he cares. When he wants to be special, he'll give us Hendrix. When he wants to be special, he'll give us March Madness. When he doesn't care, he'll give us Evolve. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he sometimes just really wants to get a message across and really wants to really... And other times, he's just making music. And I felt this project was one of those just making music things. Now, I do, I, 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 I've seen this a lot on the internet, like kind of Uzi carries that project. I don't necessarily know that. Like, uh, I, I wouldn't don't, say that. People were saying Uzi I, washed I, him. Like that. No. Yeah, and, no. and I, I think we both know who said it. I was it. it was no, no, it, no. It, it was a bunch of people who said it. Like it, it wasn't just that oh, okay. one person. <laughs> I, I would say sounds like a Brandon, but I did see yeah. Brandon tweeted that saying Uzi washed him. And I thought that, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I don't know if Uzi washed him. I thought we heard more of Uzi. Uzi did more rapping. But I don't necessarily, because there's nothing really that Uzi, because, you know, I like, I really like Eternal Awake, uh, yeah. uh, you know, so, so, I mean, I don't think anything on this was better than that, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I don't know how much he watched Future per yeah. se, uh, but again, I think both guys really went into it not, not trying to 
you know, create this experience, really more just trying to make some fun music, talk about the rich nigga shit, talk about, you know, fucking your business. Like, you know, typical things that you're going to hear from, you know, Uzi, like, listen, you got what you expected. That's kind of how I took from the project. I got what I expected. I didn't really, I didn't have crazy expectations for it, um, just because, you know, I am a little weary of, of collab projects. Yeah. Um, I, I know we mentioned a couple of the good ones, but there are a bunch of the bad ones out there. So I do get very weary when I hear niggas because I just don't think everyone meshes well. Not only do I think everyone meshes well, I think I think when you do a collab project to make it really good, like for, for instance, Watch the Throne, I think that's one of those things where it needs to be planned, sit down, and really discuss to really how they're going to make this into an experience. And I just didn't feel like they did that. I felt like the two guys went to the booth, just made some shit, and called it a day. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so if you want to just rock and bop your head, you know, I think it's a good project, but, you know, yeah. will I remember it next year? Will I remember it next month? Probably not. Will we talk about it next week? Uh, probably not. Yeah, probably it, not. it probably would have, I think a lot of collab projects would benefit from being a little shorter too. Like, I think, I think back to my tie, and even though that's, that's R&B, like Jeremiah and Ty Dolla Sign, I think that probably was like, mm-hmm. a, a, that was just 11 songs. That's, I, I, that, that, that's, a, that's a really good length, because Future and Uzi mm-hmm. Wawala, I love them. And while they are very dynamic artists, like a, a lot of this project, it, it, it didn't, it wasn't too dynamic. Like a lot of it kind of sounded, I don't want to say it sounded the same, but like, e- even though I have songs I liked, like there, there wasn't any, like, you, you know how like with certain products, there's always that one song that everyone's like, oh yeah, that's, that's, it. that's the one. Yeah. Like, I, I think there are, there are songs that people identified on this that were dope, but I, there's nothing for me. It's like, nah, that, that's it. Like, that's the one. Nah, yeah. Um, I, I thousand percent agree. And I think that it's partially because we were a bit overwhelmed. I, I think if they, I think if they would have had some other features, Thug, um, Gunna, like there's, there's so many directions they could have went. Just maybe some variation besides hearing Future and Uzi. Uh, that, and and that that's what been. leads me to, that's what leads me to believe that this is like a three day thing. Cause you know, I like in those situations, it sounds like, all right, whatever we get out, whatever we put together, if it sounds good, we're going to drop it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Cause again, like you said, no features, nobody else on there, no real variety. Mm-hmm. It's you know it was just you're gonna get what you get so yeah. Um, next project I want to get into is Kodak Black Bill Israel. Now I, I I will come out and say I've enjoyed some of what Kodak's done throughout his career. Um, he, he's had some really big singles. I've I, I've I've tuned in to his albums and th- there have been things that I like, but I wouldn't call myself a Kodak fan. Mm-hmm. It, it definitely took me some time to to get accustomed to his sound, the way he raps, but his his storytelling is is great. Like he's 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 got a lot of He's got a lot to talk about. You know, obviously he's problematic. There are a lot of people who feel certain ways about him. Um, but if we're talking about this product just in terms of his rapping on, on Bill Israel, it's great. It's, 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 it's really, really Man. Cool. Um, this was 11 songs. I skipped the Tory Lane song for obvious reasons. Um, so I listened to, <laughs> to 10 out of 11. But I ended up saving uh, 8 out of the 10 that I heard. So that's... That's, 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 that's a pretty pretty good uh, success rate for Kodak. Um, I would say my favorite songs, the, the intro, Remember the Times, is really good. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo was really that good. F- feeling that myself today. And, like, Yachty even came through and did his thing on, on um, that Make thing. a Hit. And, you know, Yachty gets a lot of shit. And, like, and, and you know, but people know the music fan I, I, I am. Like, I try to be open. I try to give everyone a chance. And, like, I, I try to find things that I like with everyone. I know people think Yachty can't rap or he's – Melodic or he sucks, whatever. That nigga make hits. I don't care what nobody says. He makes good music. He he's a good feature. He 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 does really good hooks. And when he wants to, he he can rap really well. He can uh, rap. Yeah. So to see him and Kodak link up because they were both big in summer '69. They were both on that uh, freshman class, uh, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They, they were both in the XXL mm-hmm. freshman class. So seeing the, the, their progression, like there's a lot of people who feel like you know if Kodak didn't get into all his legal stuff, like he would be kind of a, a leader of this new generation of, of artists. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily good, gonna say yes, but I, I can't give a strong no to that either. You know, and it's funny, listening to this project, so a couple of things. First off, Kodak is the worst singer that I love in the world. Yeah. Like he, his melodies are, are not complex. His voice is trash, but I, you feel every fucking thing that man says yeah like and, and it's funny because you said you know if he wasn't so problematic he may have li- but i think without his being so problematic he wouldn't be kodak like if you you can listen to the project you can hear the pain in this kid's voice 
Like you can hear the the chaos in his voice and his brain. Like he he openly tells you, as you said, he's a really good storyteller. Because the one thing he does well, although he doesn't use super complex verbiage or you know these wild vocabs or or these double entendres that some of these other artists use, he uses very plain, you know, everyday English. But man, you feel like you. I was listening to the project, shocked how much I liked it. Yeah. Shock, because you know I've never, I don't think I've ever listened to one Kodak project either. I usually just hear the singles that like do well. So like now you know what? Let me hear it, and man, like I become a Kodak fan. Like that project really, really made me like him, and it also made me feel bad for him because I don't, I think his genius is his pain. Like I like I think his genius is all the shit that he's done and going through that he's able to project it through his voice. And again, it doesn't even sound quote unquote good, right? But man, that's just catchy. Maybe you want to listen more. There's something about it. And, and I think what it was is you feel it. Like, and, and I know people kind of overuse that sometimes when it comes to music, but Kodak's like that's an real. anomaly to me. Like it, it, he is like, he's that one guy, like he's not the greatest rapper, not the greatest singer, not the greatest melody guy, but you just can't, not listen like that shit is hard that shit is hard as hell so yeah no bill israel uh, that is my mvp of the week okay. uh if you haven't heard it go listen to it. even if you're not a big kodak fan just give it a try like that shit again he, he's not got the greatest melodies his voice is not the greatest singing and not even the greatest bars in the world but you feel every fucking thing he says and you believe it yeah you believe him you believe everything he's telling you. And I think that's half the battle when it comes to art, especially nowadays, right? Where, you know, it's sad to say, being an artist is probably one of the most dangerous jobs in America. And whether you're really in that life or not, like, you, you open yourself to, to this level of, you know, attack. You, know, you, you have to tell everybody where you are, who, where you're going, this and that, just to be relevant. So to, to hear a guy who... Oh, he almost like trying to tell you that he wants to get out of this lifestyle, but can't. Like he just can't. Like this is who he is, and all that combined just really sucks you in. And I thought the project was really, really well done. I, I, I there's not too many left records I don't like. That first record was my favorite. Mm -hmm. Like that, that shit is hard. Uh, so yeah, no, I, I give it very, very high praise. Very, yeah. very high praise. Absolutely. Uh, one more rap project before John gets into his R and B bag. Um, Two Chains dropped an album, so help me God. Um, I, I I gave it, I think I gave it like two runs. It was cool. I really liked the production. Um, I, I wasn't necessarily looking for Two Chains music. Uh, he's dropped now three albums and one EP in the last four years. Twenty sixteen, he dropped two EPs too. Wow. So like, he, yeah, yeah, like he's he and and you wouldn't really know because like you know his his release is a moment, but the music hasn't really lasted beyond beyond his releases. And so with this product, I was like, you know, I'll, I'll go into it. I'll listen to it. Like, I, I like 2 chains. I really liked Pre-Girls pre Like Trap Music. Rapper Go to the League was cool. Right. So, I mean, that's... I hate... So, okay, go ahead. I'm going to that one. But go ahead. Tell me um, but this one was was cool. Like I said, it was really, really good beats. NBA Youngboy had a really good feature. The track with Kanye and Brett Fias was really good. Um, but overall, I, I, I wasn't like too moved by it. I was listening to it while I played 2K and like that, that, that's always like one test I do. Like I either test music at the gym, test in the car or test it while playing 2K. And like, if like certain shit gets me hype in 2K or I'm going crazy, I got the momentum. It's like, all right, but this, this didn't do that for me. It, it, it didn't really move me. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of 2 Chains. Actually the, the night of the release I, I was on, um, because I, I actually got the album early, so I was listening to it, and then I tweeted, like, oh, like, the production on this is really cool, and someone asked how the raps were. I was like, I'll, I'll let you listen to it, but beforehand, and he was like, 2 Chains hasn't dropped a good project since his EPs in 2016. I was like, pretty girls like trap music, and a lot of people were like, nah, that's not good. I was like, oh, wow, people didn't like that? That's, okay. that's crazy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna disrespect 2 Chains. Not, yeah. not on this podcast, okay? We're not gonna allow the disrespect 2 Chains to happen on this podcast. Pretty girls like trap music, one of the best guys in trap albums, at least top 10, maybe top 15 of the past 20 years. So don't do that, but yeah. Yeah, nah, that was one of my favorite rap albums of 2017. So it, it, it kind of sucked seeing that he, 
And again, not that I expected him to recreate that, but it's like when you see what he did with that project, the rollout, the, the feelings, and, and I actually went to a listening party for that product too. So I think that's why it's so special to me. That was like one of my first listening parties I went to. Um, but like just experiencing that and then rapid go to the league kind of dropped a bit. And like that was really hyped up because LeBron was A&R and his big features, Kendrick, Lil Wayne, Ariana Grande, Grande. And then this one I was just like, ah, oh, all right. Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> Is whatever. <laughs> so, so before I even get to this album, I, I want to say there is LeBron James has a couple blimps on his record. Okay, <laughs> LeBron got swept when he, when he was in Cleveland in his mm-hmm. younger younger days uh, in the finals. Lost that first year with Miami, and he a and would that two chase project. Mm-hmm. Rap the league is fucking ass. Okay, we're not going to discuss two chase here. I hated that project, and I blame LeBron James because I have no idea why Two Chains wanted to go to that type of production. Okay, I don't want to get Two Chains on Boom Bap beat. Okay? I don't know about I y'all. Like I I do not want to get Two Chains on a fucking. Those were probably ever, my, ever, ever. Those are probably my favorite tracks on the album. Like like Money oh. in the Way. Um, yeah, Money in the Way. Sam was really good. I don't think Sam was Boom Bap, but like. The, the, like those, t- I, I I actually like that. I actually you know what, you know why I, I feel like he was uncomfortable. Maybe that's what it was. I felt it was very uncomfortable for him, at least to, like how I absorbed it. And it could not. This is something after Pretty Girls like trap music, right? And I love that project. So to hear the 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 complete one eighty, it just felt kind of dead to me. I don't know. I, I, but again, I don't blame you, Chance. I mean LeBron. But before we get to it, after that, um, so this project, um, so for me, what I think is interesting, right, being, so I'm, I'm a bit older, I've been listening to hip-hop from day one, right? So right now, we're, in, we're entering an interesting time when it comes to hip-hop, because, you know, a lot of the, the goats are our favorites are older, right? Jay's in his 50s, Nas in his 40s, early, late 40s, Two Chainz's late 40s, Wayne, oh no, all these guys we all grew up with are, are older now. So I always take, I, so not always, but recently I have really paid attention to the, the music that's being put out by the older artists, right? Yeah. How they're trying to remain themselves and, and, and still kind of stay relevant. So I, I feel with this project, Two Chains really try to do that. And I, I, I commended him for it. You know, I saw some of the records, like the one Mulatto, uh, what's that record called? Uh, uh, Quarantine Thick. So that was a pretty good record. Um, I did like the record of uh, Feel Away, although, and I want to say this real quick, Kanye can't rap anymore. And he never really could rap because he had writers, but like the rapping he's been doing recently is garbage. Like, yeah. it's really, really bad. And we've been getting him past because he's Kanye. The bars that he's been giving us has been super stuff. Like, they're ass. I haven't been they're impressed. Ass. I haven't been impressed by a Kanye verse since, I don't know. Maybe know. Pablo? Not maybe even, Pablo? Nah, maybe? nah. Those like, verses maybe? are not that great. Those verses were not I mean, great. like, production was like even but. then, like, I can dissect a lot of the bad Pablo verses. So, like, I, I don't know. He got to get right with Drake because Kanye's verses have been <laughs> absolutely garbage. So, I, if you take Kanye off, feel away. I loved it. I love Brett Fires getting some looks finally. Yeah. I don't know why everyone's taking so long to put Brett Fires as a feature. He should be, a, he should be the feature, go-to feature in 2021. So, uh, he, I know so- 2020 sucks. <laughs> no, but um, I was gonna say Brent, like he 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 said it in an interview, like he doesn't want to be the feature guy, cause like crew blew up, okay, and like people were like, oh, but Brent Fires is the crew guy, and he's like, well, no, I I got my own shit too, like like Brent had projects out before crew came out, crew blew up, and like he's put stuff out since like, he did like one feature with Juice World on his project, uh, Death Death Race for Love, but he hasn't really done too many yeah, features. Yeah. He's he's very selective about features, cause he doesn't want to be known as the hook guy, because a lot of R&B acts get that. Miguel is considered a yeah. guy. Ty Dolla Sign, Jeremiah, it's like, they make really good original music themselves. So I get it, but Brent and 2 Chains have that relationship, because 2 Chains was featured on the Fuck the World remix. So it, it was it was good to see him. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So it was so good to see, does, see that's, yeah. That's how I like Brent, man, because he, he keep it a bean. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I mean, overall, with the 2 Chains project, uh, you, know, I, you know, I don't think it was, I don't think it was out of this world great. Um, I, it was good. I thought, you know, I may, I may, I only listen to it uh, like one and a half times. I may give it another spin just to see if I can find some other things I do like about it. But, you know, I, I, I will commend him for, again, trying to stay true to who he is, 
and still trying to adapt to a new music environment because it's hard, man. Music's changing literally daily. So, yeah. you know, not the greatest in the world, but but not bad. No, definitely not bad. Um, so yeah, let me get this R and B back real quick. Uh, there wasn't too too many R and B projects that dropped. Um, there was one in particular that I was surprised about. I listened to was was uh, Danny Lay. Now, for those of us who, or those of you who don't know who Danny Lay is, she uh, her big record was um, Lil uh, Lil Baby. Lil Baby. Yeah, yeah, Lil Baby. Yeah, yeah. And, and the one that one and the one with Chris Brown. Uh, Easy. Uh, outside of that, you probably seen her on Instagram. Uh, she was dating the baby for a little bit, but you've definitely probably seen her on Instagram. She gorgeous. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, so when I saw she dropped the project, um, so I hadn't heard about Danny Lay be- right before Lil Baby, uh, yeah, My Lil Baby, whatever the record's called, right before it dropped. Because I knew somebody that had Energy Connect, they told me that she was going to be up and coming. So I heard the record, and I was like, all right, that's cool. I heard the easy record. I was like, all right, that's cool. But I didn't really hear nothing, man. So I was like, oh, she might end up being an Instagram girl and, you know, whatever. Drop singles here and there. I, I was presently surprised. So the, the album's called Ubi. Um, and she's getting more of her R&B bag. So a lot of her previous stuff more like kind of hip hop fusion, you know, mm-hmm. hip hop R&B fusion ish. This is much more like in the vein of uh, Summer Walker. Um, I can't even think. Uh, uh, Queen Nas. Uh, actually, uh, I believe Queen Nas. Nas, hey, Queen Nas, am I saying correctly? Yeah, Queen Nas. Okay, Queen Nas. I believe she's actually on featured on this project as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but so definitely in that vein and I, I really enjoyed it I think what was interesting to me was she can sing a lot better than I thought she could mm-hmm. like she really had her vocal performance stand out now I do have one criticism okay, I, this part of my hate segment she had a, a, a feature with Party Next Door mm-hmm. okay it may, and this was I want to tie this back to what I said earlier when I feel like some artists just do a record because they're getting paid I saw Party hop out because he was getting paid. He had like a little verse at the end. He gave her some harmonies here and there. But I, I never felt like he was a part of the record. It definitely more felt like it was hers. They said, yo, Party, you can throw some shit on there for me. He added his, his little flavor and that was it. It was a little disappointing, especially because Party's on such a hot run right now, again. So that, you know, I was excited to see that. Just didn't yeah. do it for me as much as I wanted to. So a little disappointed. But outside of that, Really, really good project. So big shout out to Danny Lay and, and her team, and I was very, very proud of her. Yeah, um, this was actually a, a surprise album too. Like she didn't announce it; she just yeah, it was, it was, it was yeah, that, that day. I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea. Um, so yeah, and then Devado dropped something. I know it's not really R and B, more Afro beat. Devado dropped something. I just, yeah, <laughs> it was cool. Um, I, yeah, I'm gonna put it more to my hate list. He had to work it with a little bit. That was the one, so little baby's done so many features that it's hard to catch up sometimes. But that was one of the first times I heard, it just didn't work. Little Baby's on there. He had the Devada Little Baby record. And, uh, it wasn't it. I, I that was the one time I, I, I saw the bad feature, to be very, very blunt. They're trying uh, to, so, they're yeah. trying to push Little Baby to be like, like, Lil Baby is undeniably rapper of the year this year to me. Like, uh, uh, undeniably. Easily. But, but, he wants the work rate. Yeah, but he's doing superstar numbers, and I think his label recognizes that. So I think they tried to push him more globally with doing this this feature with, with Davido. But not every rapper is good to mesh themselves to, to the Afrobeats. Yeah. Like, it's, it's not for everybody. And that's not, that's not a like, diss to Lil Baby. He's really great at what he does. And maybe he should work at it a little more with, with the Afro beats, but I heard, I heard the it, track too. Mm. It just didn't. It just it, it felt so out of place. Yeah. It felt like it felt so forced, and even the bars were like, like I trust me, I like Little Baby, so like it's not. It's it's, it's really more like critical, you know, uh, 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 critique. Just it just I. It, that just wasn't what I needed to hear from Baby and, and Devado, Devito, whatever it is. Uh, but just a couple other records. So last time I know I killed French Montana, uh, but he actually dropped some shit, Wave, Wave Blues. And I, I don't know about you, but I think he was to our podcast because he went back to what I said. Mm. He did some real old school style, where he came up type of record. It was actually him and Benny the Butcher. That shit is hard. That's like that's mean. the best I heard French in maybe 10 years. And that is no disrespect to French, but that's probably one of the best French records I've heard in a long 
long, long time. It's called Wave Blues. It's a really good record. And uh, just a quick little slide in there. Uh, shout out to Wale. Dropped a dope little record with DJ Money called Lions, Bengals, and Bears. If you like football as much as I do, you'll really, really like it. Drops a lot of football references in there. Uh, a lot of like just oh, you know, real just football head type shit. So it's a really, really good rap record. Uh, so yeah, those are just some of the little, little sleeper singles that I really enjoy. But uh, yeah, that, again, shout out to Danny Lay. Uh, uh, you know, very, very proud of her. Very, very good R&B record. Uh, excuse me, very, very good R&B project. Uh, so definitely go give it a spin. Yeah, speaking of uh, French, actually, he's dropping a project this upcoming Friday uh, called CB5. A uh, 19 oh, track project. Coke Boys 5. Yeah, Coke Boys 5. Yeah, yeah. So uh, 19 songs. Lil Dirk is on it. Uh, a, a bunch of the names you would expect, like some big name features. Like well, one thing, one thing French ha- has the luxury of is he's, he's 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 got a lot of industry friends. Like a lot of people, oh, keep, yeah. he can call and be like, "Yo, yeah, jump on my album." Because like French is usually the worst verse on on all of his songs, but at least he brings in these stars who who carry them. So it's like, all right, dog. So you know, but but with the enthusiasm you had for the Benny track, I'm 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 looking forward to seeing it because if 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 you know Coke Boys, this is this is what this is French's holy grail. This, this, is, this is yeah. So it's like he so if it's, if it's like that, if he's going back to that type of, of French, it might we won't talk about it next week, but it might it might win my love list. It might be my MVP. We'll see. But Waves Blue, is, uh, listen to Waves Blue, and you're gonna be like, oh. French still remembers how to do this well. Okay, dope. And, and you know what I'm saying? See where we can go. But yeah, I, I, I'm actually, I'm looking, I'm going to write that down. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And for me, this, this isn't a sleeper. This album dropped a couple weeks ago, but I, I finally got to really fully experience it. WizKid, Made in Lagos is, if, if, if anyone were to say that's an album of the year candidate, I'm not going to argue with you. I listened to it no. on, on my run the other day and I, I was floating. I, I was, I was ascending. I, I, I I got upset when the album ended. I was like, yo, this is so good. Like, like just the, the, the like, that's what I love. Uh, we can, uh, I'm, Ginger, amazing. Smile. Florida boy. Smile with, with her, which by the way, it, I'm surprised like people, like that record dropped a while ago. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was playing it for uh, South of Dwight, which is He's like, I actually heard that record. He's like, nigga. This shit goes crazy. Yeah, so yeah, true. Smile's an amazing record. Uh, even the ones by himself, uh, Mighty Wine, uh, Sweet One, uh, Essence. Oh no, this oh my god, absolutely amazing, absolutely yeah. amazing project. Yeah, so I love that one, and I'll, I'll say uh, featuring Ty Dolla Sign. I, this came out like a month ago, but I'm telling you now that is a top five album of the year for me personally. Um, I've I, I haven't been able to stop listening to it. It's like interesting. If, if if I put one song on, I'm like, damn, this is so good. Nah, I, I need to run it from the beginning. Now I run it from the beginning, it finishes, and I start it right back over. Like it's Ty, mm. Ty really, really did his thing, and I, and I know a lot of people were worried because 25 songs, all those features, but this is Ty Dolla Sign, dog. Like this is not some random young artist trying to game streaming. This is Ty who we were waiting on the album on for a while. This is Ty who makes everyone's music better, and. He and people have always questioned his album making ability, which is crazy because he's made some really good albums in, in his career. Um, what's it called? Um, something, something three. Uh, what's uh, the fucking? B, uh, B, so he's you got Beach House three. Beach House three. For Beach three TC history. was good. Campaign was good. Uh, yeah, the, 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 this is how I know people don't listen to music. Ty Dolla Sign is actually probably one of the better R and B album makers out there. Like right easily, now, yeah. I, it's, I I haven't heard like. I really can't think of a, a, a Ty EP that I, or an album that I didn't like. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, even the one with Jeremiah. Actually, with, man, it got, I feel like no real recognition. But that, that was a really, really good joint project. Like, the shit that him and Jeremiah did was really, really, really good. And I, it, it didn't get the trash that I expected it to. But, yeah, no, Ty is very, very good. I actually, I, I, it's funny to say that because I didn't give the album as much time as I felt like I should have. So I'm gonna actually go back so to hear how much you enjoy it. I hope the rest of you are watching do too. But yeah, I definitely want to get that 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 project one more time. Yeah. So it was a busy weekend. I mean, holiday season. I think we got a, a lot of busy weekends coming up musically. But uh, as we said, that Russ hard, that Kodak hard, that two chains. One more sleeper. Before we go, one oh, more yeah, sleeper. Yeah, yeah. My last one. Who won it by Three Old Black? Mm, yes. And a lot of you have no idea who that is. I know y'all remember that damn meme. Someone, 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 wait, see, I still can't know that. Mm-hmm. I still can't remember that shit. 
But the nigga's like walking in thing, don't shoot the shoot the gun, boom. Then it is two, boom, boom. Then it is me, that dude. He got the project three zero black. Who won it? That shit is actually hard. Shout out to him. And I haven't heard nothing from since that meme went super super viral. But he dropped the project this weekend. Very very good. I, that I, I'll just give you a couple of track things very very quickly that if you want to check out. Um, oh shit. Uh, back in the day, hard as hell. Uh, he got one money bag and and, and uh, take Keith hole up. That shit hard as hell. He got a little baby on here. Uh, a couple, a couple others, man, and shit. But nah, really, pretty good project. Pretty yeah. good project. I hope I want to see where this guy goes eventually. Yeah, no, I'll definitely tap into that. But yeah, um, this is everything music. It's the boy Armand, King Solomon, Faithful Black King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the vibes. We here every week for y'all. Bring y'all the takes. Bring y'all the spice. As you know, what you expect. YouTube channel. Check out everything we got. We got the outlet. The gag. We got liberalish. We got Dwa breaking down seasons of girlfriends. Like we we got it all for you. So <laughs> yeah, we got we got drop all you sports heads. We got all draft coverage tonight. Yes. Hey man, listen, we here. What Let's you respect, respect the label, baby. The Haitian King. I mean, I <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. Uh... Bless you.